Welcome to Tech Intersect. I'm your host, Tanya Evans, and my life and work exist at the heart of law, business, and technology. Yeah, I've earned a few fancy titles and degrees over the years, but the bottom line is I'm a writer, speaker, teacher, and lifelong learner. And I'm really excited that you've joined me on this journey. So what is Tech Intersect? Well, it's authentic, empowering conversations with really interesting guests who demystify complex topics to prepare you for the future, because your future is now. And it exists where law, business, and tech intersect. Get ready to listen, learn, and leverage. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tech Intersect. I'm your host, Tanya Evans, and I'm an intellectual property, innovation, and technology lawyer and law professor at Penn State Dickinson Law School. And I'm a lifelong learner dedicated to crypto and blockchain education and empowerment, especially for communities that have historically been underestimated and locked out of tech and finance. Crypto and blockchain exist at the intersection of these two worlds, and this technology has the potential to really level the playing field and empower you not to just survive, but thrive in a way not previously experienced. But to do so, we have to understand the business and legal side of creativity, and I'm here to help with this series on non-fungible tokens. Now, in episode 59, I introduced some legal topics implicated by minting and selling non-fungible tokens, or NFTs or NIFTs, specifically for creativity and collectibles. And I answered questions that I've been asked in interviews and clubhouse rooms on social media. And in episode 60, we heard from NFT music artist Gafachi for an artist's point of view. And in episode 61, I explained what intellectual property is. I talked about the different types of intellectual property, copyright, patent, trademark, trade secret, right of publicity, and the like. And we took a closer look at copyright and fair use. So definitely go back to those episodes. And in an upcoming episode, I'll be talking with the good folks from One Off for the platform and marketplace point of view. So be sure that you're subscribed to this channel to this podcast so that you are notified for all upcoming content. Now, in this episode, I provide an overview of general terms and conditions of NFT minting and marketing platforms that you should expect, but it may not necessarily be at the forefront of your mind as an artist, for example, when you're going to create your NFTs, or maybe even from an investor or collector's point of view, where you're not reading the fine print of the terms and conditions, you're just jumping in. The bottom line, and if you take nothing else away from this episode, please take away that you must read the fine print, because one of the benefits and features of minting and creating NFTs connected to your creativity or your collectibles creates a record of creation and ownership, but one that cannot be changed. That's what it means to be immutable. So if you get it wrong in the beginning, well, it's not like you can call customer service and roll it back. But contrary to some critics, this space is not a bubble. In fact, NFT coding standards like ERC-721 have been around since 2014. The hype cycle and FOMO, however, is real. So what I want to encourage you to do is take your time, get informed, take off your creative cap and put on your business hat during this episode to get clear, to get focused, and then get in the game. Okay, before we jump into the episode, take a moment to follow and then like, share, comment so that others who would benefit from this content can find it. And I also invite you to my website, AdvantageEvans.com, to learn more about my full suite of From Cash to Crypto courses and to register for a free upcoming masterclass on the future of money. There's something for everyone from the newbie to the person who wants to take their crypto investments or their work to the next level. Seize this opportunity to learn while you earn and create generational wealth and do so safely, legally, and confidently. There are multi-lesson modules, live coaching, community. I love it. And the community continues to grow by leaps and bounds every single week. I give you the unbiased facts in plain language. I give you a solid foundation. So visit AdvantageEvans.com for more information. Okay, time to listen, learn, and leverage. So let's get started. 
Non-fungible tokens or NFTs are a way to prove ownership and to exercise control over some other asset. Maybe it's digital media, some image or video, audiovisual work, or even access to some physical object or experience. But unlike cryptocurrencies, which are fungible, meaning one is the same as the other and therefore interchangeable, NFTs are each unique. They're not capable of being duplicated and their scarcity is verifiable because of the transactional information that's recorded to the relevant blockchain, like the Ethereum virtual machine or Flow, for example. So that cool image or collectible or video the NFT owner owns doesn't actually live on the blockchain. Instead, the token represents ownership and provides the ability to access to transfer, for example. It refers to a file that sits somewhere else on the web, for example, using the interplanetary file system, IPFS. So I talked more about that in a previous episode, and I'll drop some links to some more general information. In this episode, I want to focus on the rights that a creator grants to a platform and ultimately to the investor or collector of their NFT. So in terms of the rights granted to platforms, I've been pouring over the terms of service across all platforms. I'm not going to focus on a specific platform here, but I will link to a list of platforms and what they offer, et cetera. So, but I'm going to talk, you know, address it with a broad brush because most, if not all of them proceed in this fashion. But again, D-Y-O-R, do your own research and look at the terms and conditions for each of the platforms. So first, what rights does an artist grant to the platform? Most commonly, you'll see language like worldwide, non-exclusive, royalty-free licenses. A worldwide, non-exclusive, royalty-free license from the artist to the platform. Usually, it comes with a right to sub-license and make available to other companies or organizations or individuals as well. Gives the platform a little room to breathe in case it goes out of business or transfers its assets, maybe it's become acquired by a bigger company or something like that. But that license is the right to exploit all of the rights that make up your bundle of copyright if you are an artist. So that means copyright is not just one right, but a bundle of rights. And it gives the owner of that copyright the exclusive right to do, to authorize others to do, and to prevent others from doing five basic things. The right to copy or reproduce, the right to adapt or prepare derivative works, the right to publish the creativity, the right to transmit, to publicly display, to publicly perform if it's capable of being performed, and to do so in all media now known or created at some point in the future throughout the world. Obviously, we are dealing with decentralized technology. So, of course, that's important language. And that doesn't hurt the artist's rights at all. It just provides a platform and an opportunity for that platform to publicly display, to publicly perform, to make reproductions, and ultimately to distribute that work to others. Another thing that you will see in terms of service or terms and conditions of use is a section In some form or fashion, some are long, some are super short. Some platforms don't do a great job at this. They're great at minting, not so great at explaining their terms of service. So I encourage you to take a close look and compare and contrast platforms on this basis as well. How robust is their explanation and their protection of your rights? So generally speaking, across all platforms, the artist will warrant and represent, basically promise that you haven't infringed on anyone else's intellectual property or other legal rights, and that you take full responsibility for any violation of local and state, national, or even international laws, whether or not you know what those laws are. And this includes not only your creativity or collectible, but also any listing content, smart contract code, associated metadata. So you have to be very careful of defamation or threats of violence, doxing, immorality, whatever that means. I saw that in a couple of the terms of service as well. The platform reserves the right to take down any work that violates the terms and conditions. And they do so based on the contract, uh, as you see with terms and conditions, but also in the United States, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act or the DMCA. And that's because every platform must have an IP claims contact 
for copyright infringement claims specifically in order to avoid being secondarily liable for copyright infringement that may occur on their platform. But any issue should be sent to the platform. So I've heard a lot of artists say you have to shame people publicly and send out the information and and you have to tweet about them and get the whole community to rise up against a person. I get that completely. And there is something to be said for publicly shaming or let's take shame out of it. I'm not really a proponent of shame, but putting people on public notice that there's been an infringement and that there's actually been quite a bit of rampant infringement and taking other people's work, creating an NFT. And that is highly problematic. But the way you resolve it is not about complaining to people who have nothing to do with it and can do nothing about it. Take all of your evidence and submit it to the relevant platform. All right. So any issue you have about copyright infringement or infringement of your trademarks or other things, the DMCA focuses specifically on copyrights. But a platform that wants to remain viable in the community is not going to tolerate infringing works on its platform. They're going to take it down. There are examples of that already. So you have to be careful to send to the platform. Be careful with your public claims. Keep it to strictly the facts because you're creating a public record of what you are saying as well, and you don't want to be on the hook for any defamation to someone's character. It may serve a purpose, but again, it doesn't do anything to remove the infringing work, and that's the most important thing, so it doesn't harm your market or your reputation or your work. So bottom line, submit your notice of infringement to the platform and then be prepared to prove your claim. Platforms also reserve the right to take down infringing works or to suspend or terminate the accounts of repeat infringers. Again, that is what platforms must do in order to get what we call a safe harbor, the safe harbor protections of the DMCA to make sure that they're not on the hook for someone else's infringement. And so trust and believe they're going to remove themselves from liability before they ever subject themselves to it for somebody else's infringement. So I want to say a quick note about secondary market sales. So Nifty Gateway, super rare, known origin. There's some that immediately come to mind where there is some type of seller, artist, platform share in secondary market sales that flow back upstream automatically through smart contract to hit the artist and the platform's wallet, the seller's wallet uh, to the extent that that artist is no longer the seller. So that means the artist has created an NFT, sold it to the buyer who then becomes the seller downstream. And so obviously the seller is going to make some money. Money will flow back upstream to the artist and to the platform. Each platform has a different combination of the, um, or division, I should say, of that pie. But it's really, really exciting. It's one of the things that should be most exciting to artists who can remain connected to a revenue stream of their work even after the initial sale. So I'm really excited about that. That's a major source of empowerment for artists. Again, participation in all future sales, automated through smart contract, split between artist, seller, platform, lots of ways to structure this. And I anticipate that there will be more favorable artist arrangements coming down the pike because there's going to be a lot of competition ramping up in the marketplace and the protocol space for minting NFTs and for displaying them as well, virtual galleries. I just see a lot of really exciting things that can happen as a result of smart contract code. All right. This is a short but sweet episode, but that's a lot for you to think about. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, for listening, if you're listening through the podcast, Thank you for sending all of your comments, your questions, your discussion items. You are helping to focus my remarks, my time, my research, my attention on making sure that I am empowering you. If you have a clubhouse room or you have a club and you want to invite me to speak, please definitely reach out to me. I hang out in those Twitter streets for sure. Uh, you can drop a comment. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at IPProf for Professor IP Prof Evans and also Advantage Evans across all channels. All right. Let me know what ahas and favorite moments you had listening to this episode, what questions you have, drop a comment or tweet, and please take a moment to like, comment, and share this episode and this podcast with your networks. Follow me on social media and let me know what topics you would like to hear more of and who you want to hear from. All right. That's it for this episode. Until next time, continue to 
shine. Stay in touch with host Tanya Evans via your favorite social media on Twitter at at Tech Intersect and on Instagram via the handle Tech Intersect. This podcast has been produced by Stephanie Renee for Soul Sanctuary Incorporated.